I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Hi, my name is Cameron, and I shaved my eyebrows off again because I was tired of looking normal. And I also made a Twitter that you could follow me on, at Boy Cameron. If you want to have a conversation with me, I feel like Twitter would be the easiest place for you to have that conversation with me rather than in the comments section or through Instagram. So follow me on there, I guess. I wanted to talk about something that I don't really see a lot of people talking about on YouTube. I found a few articles written by some trans people, but overall not a lot of information is out there about this. I also haven't seen a lot of the children being affected by this speaking out because either a, they probably don't know that their parents are parts are a part of these groups, or two, their identity is being so suppressed that they can no longer access social media or access trans-related content due to what their parents believe. You're probably wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, from the people who brought you the gay agenda, we now introduce to you the trans agenda. <laughs> Tony. I just really wanted to make that joke. What I'm actually talking about today is the phenomenon of rapid onset gender dysphoria. This is not a real diagnosis. This is a term that was made up by a bunch of anti-trans parent groups on the internet, on websites such as Fourth Wave Now, Transgender Trend, and then also some subreddits on Reddit as well to describe spontaneous gender dysphoria that they believe their children were experiencing through excessive social media use or by being around trans people. These parents believe that their kids don't actually have gender dysphoria, but that this dysphoria is being brought on by outside influences and it's making them want to be trans because that's trendy or they feel like they need to have dysphoria because they're watching YouTube videos with trans people in them or they're seeing trans people in a positive light in media. Basically, these parents believe that well, my kid wasn't showing any signs of gender dysphoria before this. This came on so spontaneously. I don't know where it came from. So they must be just being brainwashed by the trans agenda. I don't know if I actually say the trans agenda. I just think it's funny to say. In comes a Brown University assistant professor named Lisa Littman. I believe she worked for the School of Public Health. She created this anonymous survey which she placed a link to on these anti-trans websites for parents where the parents would go and anonymously answer questions. And from the data that she collected from this, these surveys, she published a paper talking about rapid onset gender dysphoria. Now, if you didn't catch the problem, the big problem with this study, and she even admits this in the paper herself, is that she only surveys the parents. And she collects this data from inherently anti-transgender parents. So she's collecting her data from transphobic parents only. She doesn't have any data from parents of trans kids who actually support them. She's only getting one side of the story. That's the main issue with the study. Anyways, this study was published. There was a lot of problems with like where it was published and it immediately got a lot of criticism. And then the magazine that it was published in took it down and then like republic, like it, it was a lot of shit cause it's, it's not that good of a study. The anti-trans parent groups saw this study and they're like, well, there it is. This is proof that our kids are just being brainwashed, that rapid onset gender dysphoria is a thing and therefore our kids aren't actually trans we're gonna brush that the issue of them possibly being trans to the side it's the internet's fault once again the study actually calls transness a social contagion among adolescents and compares it to pro-anorexia communities such as pro-anorexia tumblr blogs or pro-anorexia subreddits which like I, I don't even know where the fuck to start like 
the study is literally making a comparison to online groups that promote eating disorders, that promote unhealthy ways to lose weight, that promote unhealthy weight loss goals to a community of people trying to explore their identity and come to terms with their identity and affirm one another. This is this is a real thing. Like the study actually compares being trans in being in a community with other trans people to pro-anorexia communities. The study also says that the parents believe that their kids aren't actually experiencing gender dysphoria, they're actually just depressed or have anxiety or have PTSD or some other type of mental illness and it's not actually gender dysphoria. Now I got a lot of information from the website genderanalysis.net which is run by Zinnia Jones and she made a very good point which I'm going to quote here. As the number of proposed alternative causes of gender dysphoria multiplies, so do the theoretical gaps. The rapid onset gender dysphoria hypothesis must now explain the mechanisms by which each of dozens of issues would produce gender dysphoric symptoms. Paraphrasing, all of these different circumstances are so common that if they were a significant contributor to the development of dysphoria, far more than a mere 0.6% of the population would be trans. That just made sense to me and I really liked that quote. So if you don't know me, I'm a non-binary trans boy and I have depression and I also have anxiety. I was diagnosed with those things at age 13. I was put on Zoloft when I was 13 to treat the depression and anxiety. I'm mentioning this because a lot of these parents and also JK Rowling are saying that these kids just need antidepressants. They don't need to go to a gender therapist. A year later when I was 14, I actually discovered that the unease I felt with identifying as a girl was actually gender dysphoria. Zoloft did not cure my gender dysphoria. Zoloft helped with my depression and anxiety, but my gender dysphoria is separate from those two things. You can give me serotonin, but I still have gender dysphoria at the end of the day. And then these parents uh, on these websites like to talk about all of the potential risks of starting hormone replacement therapy. And yes, there are risks to literally every medication ever. There are risks to starting antidepressants. Because I started antidepressants when I was 13, now I'm essentially medically asexual, but that's a story for another time. I discovered that I was trans when I was 14 years old. I did actually discover this through the internet because I didn't know what the word for it was before. I had been experiencing feelings of gender dysphoria since I was about five years old, but I didn't know how to vocalize that and I didn't know the proper vocabulary until I was 14. When you're five years old, you don't really know how to tell your parents that you think you might secretly be a boy and nobody's telling you that. Because one, you know that they won't believe you and they'll keep trying to convince you that you are a girl. And two, like how do you even begin to say that as a five-year-old? Like how, how do you even start to express that to your parents or the adults around you? So I guess because it took me until I was 14 to like give a name to what I was feeling. To these parents on these websites, I do look like I have rapid onset gender dysphoria because I didn't come out of the womb saying, I wanna wear cargo pants. On the surface to like everybody around me, it seemed like it was spontaneous. But the thing is like, as much as parents want to think that they know their kids, they really don't. Kid is their own person. Kids don't tell their parents everything. Like it's a personal journey. You don't tell every single person around you. And I mean some people do, some kids do, and they transition at a young age and like good for them. But that's not the case for a lot of people. So I guess I can understand how to these parents it seems like spontaneous. Just because your kid didn't show any signs of being gender dysphoric before doesn't mean that they weren't experiencing those feelings. They just weren't being open with you about them and that could be for a number of reasons. As trans people continue to become more visible 
in the mainstream media and also everyday life where they're shown in a positive light and not vilified like they were in the past, obviously more people are going to come to terms with their gender identity and discovering, oh, I might be trans. For the past few centuries, we've been so strict on gender roles and gender stereotypes that we haven't had a chance to actually explore our identities and how we as individuals want to express ourselves. Anyways, that's all I have to say. I hope this made sense. Thank you for watching. I'll try to have another video up by next week, but also I need ideas. So like, let me know what you want to see a video on in the comments or send me a tweet on Twitter at Boy Cameron and tell me how in love you are with me because it motivates me to make videos. Okay, bye.